The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is giving the protagonists a lead role in one of the most complex and interesting stories that can be derived from the movies. These from Disney Plus are a great idea because only a few episodes in, and you can tell that the two of them have been given more credit than in any of the MCU films they've been in. In the second episode, when Bucky Barnes and Sam Wilson finally do meet up, Sam makes an interesting call to Bucky's past, specifically from his time in Wakanda. He mentions how, during his time there, he came to be known as the White Wolf, and this opened the door to a lot of speculation. Likewise, in Avengers Infinity War, T'Challa called Bucky the White Wolf, and in the post credit scene in Black Panther, we see how the Wakandan people are playing their part in helping Bucky recuperate. All of this may be hinting at a new storyline for the Winter Soldier, but in the end, it was dropped, and the references we got were only a subtle easter egg. But could we see Bucky return to Wakanda to take up the mantle of the White Wolf again? It actually seems very plausible, but who exactly is the White Wolf in the comics? Once you know the backstory, the picture becomes a lot clearer. Interestingly enough, White Wolf in the comics is the name of one of Black Panther's biggest enemies, so it's not exactly clear why the MCU would give Bucky that name. Let's take a closer look at White Wolf's origin from the comics and see how the MCU can adapt that with their already well-established version of Bucky Barnes. The first episode of The Falcon and Winter Soldier really shows how difficult Bucky's life has been. In his own words, he had been in a non-stop fight for over 80 years, and that kind of exertion can really weigh on a person. There is a lot about his Winter Soldier past that we don't know about, but we have the basic gist. He was put in ice and unfrozen whenever there was someone to fight or kill, and then sent back to the freezer just waiting for his next mission to thaw him out. The brainwashing from Hydra was some of the most intense psychological trauma that Bucky had gone through, and it took a lot of effort on the part of Captain America to snap him out of it. Yes, Steve is very particular with his speeches and uses a few key words to rekindle the sense of friendship that they once had. But in all honesty, when you've been under the influence of a top secret Nazi facility, it might take more than a few motivational speeches to snap you out of it. This requires some scientific framework and Cap is not exactly a scientist. And anyway, Steve needed to keep Buck safe. After all, he had been the world's biggest hitman for over 80 years, and evidently, there would be a very few institutions that would be willing to take him under their care. And that is what led Bucky to Wakanda, where their advanced technological marvels were the best chance to break the spell that Bucky was under. This, coupled with the fact that they had a leader that knew that Bucky needed help rather than punishment for his crimes, led him to his redemption arc. He even volunteers to be frozen up again until the Wakandans can find him a cure. The next stage we cut to is his recuperation and healing from the post credit scene in Black Panther. Then the Mad Titan came knocking, and despite knowing that Bucky was tired of warfare, he mentions that the White Wolf has rested long enough. This might have a few interesting implications to the character in the future. So was Bucky ever the White Wolf in the comics? Well, no. But this makes giving Bucky the moniker all the more interesting, especially since White Wolf is a villain in the comics. It will all make sense when you hear White Wolf's comic story and why it matters to Bucky. In the comics, long ago, there was a plane crash near the Wakandan border where the only survivor was a Caucasian child. Wakanda is known for their secrecy when it comes to the true nature of their country and the technology they possess. But this time, T'Chaka, T'Challa's father, took pity on the orphan boy named Hunter and raised him as his own in Wakanda. Everything changed when T'Challa was born as this meant that Hunter was no longer in line for the Wakandan throne. This had an interesting effect on Hunter. Even though he was furious, he decided to train him body and mind in order to prove that he could become the ideal Wakandan warrior. He became a fearsome legend and also headed up his own Wakandan police force, taking the name White Wolf. But things only got worse when T'Challa took up the throne. As the animosity grew, T'Challa had disbanded the police force for being too violent and banished them from Wakanda. The men then became mercenaries for hire, and every time that the two brothers crossed paths, it would lead to some sort of conflict. It is very much like the brotherly feud between Thor and Loki. Even though he had deep-seated resentment for T'Challa, he was always loyal to Wakanda and helped to secure the country if ever an outside threat presented itself. 
but you might have noticed by now, this sounds a lot like the origin story of Killmonger, and the MCU can't really introduce this without making it look like a copy of the original film. So, to freshen things up, the moniker has been given to Bucky. Of course, they wouldn't want to make him a villain again, that would just be cruel. He could, on the other hand, be introduced as the right hand of justice on Wakandan land. Remember that he headed up his own police force while remaining super loyal to Wakanda, but tends to be too violent. This could mean that he will be set up as a major supporting character in future films. This is very easy to translate to Bucky and would make an interesting plot line for Black Panther 2. So that's it for this video guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, and for more content like this, subscribe to KRTV.